But what do you get when you put John Mellencamp, Buddy Guy, and Hart's Ann Wilson on stage for a jam session with the owner of an NFL team? Well, you get the Jim Ursay Band, the Colts owner putting on a star-studded musical event to kick off the NFL season at Lucas Oil Stadium. The IBJ's Dave Lindquist joins us now uh, to explain how this is part of maybe a bigger picture. Dave, uh, coming to us from the IBJ headquarters downtown. Dave, uh, the talent at this show was really great, especially for a free event. It was a pretty star-studded event. So the drummer in this band is uh, Kenny Aronoff, an IU grad who played with John Mellencamp for many years. And I talked to Kenny the other day, and I was slightly surprised when he said that uh, he's known Jim Irsay for 35 years, and he said Jim Irsay cares about music as much as he cares about football. <laughs> so in, in Jim's high-profile life through the years, he's befriended people like Stephen Stills, Mike Mills from REM. Um, a lot of different, yeah, that's fascinating. And this is part of, I don't know if you call it a tour, or would you, uh, Dave? A number of these uh, musical events that he has ha held around the country. And as I understand it, uh, the event held this weekend at, at Lucas Oil, kind of bigger and better than some of those other productions. Right, so in addition to befriending musicians, uh, Jim Mercer has spent the last few years amassing a one-of-a-kind collection of pop culture artifacts. Uh, guitars previously previously owned by all members of the Beatles, Ringo Starr's drum kit from 1964, David Gilmore's guitar, a guitar owned by Prince, and a guitar owned by yeah. uh, Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. And uh, since last summer, he's been taking it to uh, cities ac across the United States and showing it off. Yeah. Hey, well, I want to talk about that because I talked with Jim Irsay on my Business and Beyond podcast earlier this year, and he talked about the collection and his interest, at least at the time, in uh, creating a standalone museum for it. Here's what he had to say. $100 million of, of, of artifacts and different things into this facility, and I'm not looking to make money on but, but there ha it has to be displayed, shown the right place. And, and, and if it doesn't work out, you know, I can't keep it in, in the city or state. I have to go to Nashville or Austin, and I don't want to. All right, Dave, you're hearing, though, that maybe that permanent location for a museum isn't in the cards now. What, what, what are you hearing on that front? So I think the, the acknowledged perception when he started the tour is that he was auditioning cities for a museum. Uh, Indianapolis, of course, uh, a lot of people in town would love to have it. It would be quite a, an asset for the city. Um, but he gave an interview in New York a few weeks ago where he kind of tweaked that idea. I yeah. think he's having such a great time playing music with these world-class musicians that he's talking about kind of an open-ended tour. So we will we see, got an we'll see where that goes. Dave, we're out of time right now. Thanks for joining us.